Okay, so in this problem we're told two blocks made of different materials connected together by a thin cord slide down a plane ramp incline at an angle theta to the horizontal as shown in this figure. Block B is above block A. The masses of the blocks are MA and MB and the coefficients of, of friction are mu sub A and mu sub B. If MA equals MB, which equals 5 kilograms, and mu sub A is 0.2, and mu sub B is 0.3, determine A, the acceleration of the blocks, and B, the tension in the cord, for an angle theta equals 32 degrees. So, I went ahead and drew uh, the figure here. So, we have this incline with an angle, right, an incline of 32 degrees. Uh, we have these two blocks, MA and MB, connected by this cord here. We know the mass of the, uh, the blocks, and then the coefficient of kinetic friction, or of friction, right, between uh, the each block and the floor. So for A, it's 0.2, and for B, it's 0.3. So for this, we're going to be solving for a few things. Uh, the first one, we're going to be solving for acceleration of these blocks, right? So they're going to have the same acceleration uh, since they're connected like this. And uh, that's what we're trying to find, right? So the acceleration of the blocks down this incline. And so the way we're going to do it is by summing the forces along this x direction here. So uh, whenever you do an incline problem like this, uh, you want to label your axes, right? So in this case, we have this is the x axis. So per or parallel to this incline is the x. And then perpendicular to that would be your y axis. So this is your x and y. I'm going to label this side to be positive, this side to be negative, this side to be positive, and this to be negative. So left is positive, right is negative. And then up's positive, down's negative. So any force going to the left is positive, any force going to the right is negative. Okay, cool. So uh, basically the way we're going to do this is uh, we're going to sum the forces in the x direction for each of the blocks. So uh, we're going to treat them as two independent systems, uh, and that's going to allow us to actually solve for it. So I'm going to start with box A. So sum of the forces in the x for block A is equal to MA. So let me do like this so we know we're talking about block A. So MA is going to be equal to, and then now what I'm going to do is draw the free body diagram. So for this block, uh, we know we have the force due to gravity acting straight down. So this is your MG. Uh, we also know we have the normal force, which acts straight up like this, right, perpendicular to the incline. Uh, we know there's going to be tension in this cable right here, which we can call T, or actually I'll call it F of T. And then we also know the force of friction is going to be the same uh, direction. So keep in mind, I'll do a different color. We have the force of friction acting this way too. So I'll call that F sub F for the force of friction. And uh, that's going to be acting opposite to motion because we know it travels this way. So force of friction is always opposite of motion. Okay, cool. And so uh, now that we have it like this, uh, notice that F sub N, uh, F sub T and the force of friction are all acting uh, along one of the axes. So uh, these are along the X, this is along the Y, but MG is kind of in the middle. So we want to split MG into two components. Uh, it's X and Y components, uh, because whenever you do a free body diagram, you want it to be, uh, you want to label each force along an axis. So uh, this will be your uh, FG of Y, you could call it, right? The Y component of gravity. And then this would be your FG of X because it's along the X and this one's along the Y. Uh, what these values are, we'll find them in a second, uh, but just keep that in mind. Okay, cool. So now that we have the free body diagram for this block, we can actually go back and um, just sum them up. So along the X direction, what forces do we have? So we're going to have two forces, or three, sorry. The force of friction is along the X, the tension's along the X, and gravity's along the X, or at least the X component of it. So as I said before, to the left is positive, so we have minus F sub T, right, because it's to the right, minus the force of friction, because it's to the right, uh, and then we have plus F G of X, because this one is to the left, it's going downwards. And so uh, what we're going to want to do is get this in terms of F of T. So if I was to do that, I would get F of T equals MA, right, adding these to the other side, or I'm just going to add f of t to the other side and then move this over. So it would be uh, equals to the minus force of friction plus fg of x minus ma. And uh, yeah, so uh, notice this is our formula for the force of friction uh, or for the force of tension in this cord here. 
Uh, and we want to split these up or, or just get them into a more simpler form. So uh, the force of friction you should know is mu sub k times f sub n. So we have minus mu sub k times the normal force plus fg of x. I'll explain what that is now. So hopefully you know how to do this by now, but essentially the way it works is this angle theta here is the same as the uh, uh, theta, the incline angle, so 32 degrees. And so if we wanted to find fg of x, notice that this line right here, let me get a different color here. Uh, let's go with purple. So this line right here, oh, it didn't switch. Let me fix that. So this line right here is your mg, okay? And so we're trying to find fg of x, which is this line right here. And so the way we would do it is by using trig. So you should know the sine of an angle, in this case theta, is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the opposite of this angle here, of this triangle, you can imagine like a triangle, it should be right angled sort of like this, is uh, opposite is fg of x over the hypotenuse, which is mg. So it's equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And if you multiply both sides by mg, you would get your fg of x, which is mg sine of theta, right? So that's your value for um, the x component of your gravity. So for the y component, you would just use cosine. So I'll show you that now. Uh, the y component is equal to uh, so cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, where adjacent is this side here of the triangle, and then your y component is, uh, or your hypotenuse is mg. So it would be fg of y over mg. Once again, you multiply both sides, and there you go. There is your fg of y. So now we know it to plug into this equation. Let me go back to white. Um, but yeah, so now we know fg of x, so we can plug that actually in. So as I said before, fg of x is mg sine of theta. And then we have minus ma. Uh, and the only thing we're missing here now is the normal force. So uh, let's find that now. So uh, the normal forces, you would just sum the y. So uh, some of the forces in the y in this case, notice it's only traveling along the x here. So it's, actually, it's not actually moving in the y. And if something's not moving in that direction, the sum of the forces are just zero. Because if its velocity is zero, the acceleration is zero. Uh, therefore, a is zero, right? So ma, if a is zero, the whole thing is zero. So zero equals, then just sum up the terms in the y. So notice we have the normal force here, and then we have uh, the other y, which is fg of y. So uh, upwards is positive, so we have f sub n, which is upwards, minus fg of y, which is down. So this tells me, moving this to the other side, our normal force is really just equal to our y component of gravity, which we actually just found right here. So we can just plug that in there. So you'll get f of t equals minus mu sub k mg cos of theta plus mg sine of theta minus ma. And uh, yeah, so that right there is your formula for the force of tension of the first block. And so we're actually going to have to do this for both blocks. Uh, obviously, we'll go through b a bit faster here. But uh, yeah, so the way this is going to work is you notice we found the force of tension. Uh, we're going to do the same thing for the other block, and we'll have two equations solve for f of t. Uh, and then we'll just be able to set them equal to each other, and then actually be able to solve for what we want, right, which is the acceler uh, acceleration. So going ahead to do that now, let's draw the free body diagram for block B now. Right, so once again, we have mg, we have f sub n, but now notice the tension is going to point this way. So f of t is now, let me go to a different color. So f of t is now that way, while the force of friction is still this way. Right, so notice that that's the difference in this one. Uh, but mg is still the same. Uh, and then keep in mind, you have your x and y component. Uh, still the same thing, right? Or sorry, mg isn't that way. That was a mistake of mine. Uh, let me erase that. Sorry about that. So mg always points straight down. So mg would be pointing down like this. Uh, and then you have your x and y components like that. So this is your, sorry, things are getting a pretty messy. We have mg there. This is your fg of x. This is your fg of y. But yeah, so everything is the same essentially, except for that little part. Uh, I'm actually going to do this in green still. So once again, we're summing the forces in the x. It's going to be equal to ma. 
ma equals now summing the forces here in the x we have uh, the same forces force of friction uh, the force of tension and the x component of gravity notice their directions are different though so uh, the force of tension is now positive we still have the force of friction acting to the right which we denoted as negative uh, and then fg of x is still positive um, and then just solving for this a bit better, right? We want f of t by itself. f of t equals ma uh, plus the force of friction this time, moving it to the other side, and then minus fg of x. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we've got it like this. Um, and now we already know what these things are. So f of t equals um, ma plus... The force of friction is mu sub k times f sub n. Keep in mind, we know what the normal force is. It's the same for both blocks. It's just mg uh, cosine of theta. So if you didn't, if you forget that, just go look at the other block. And then minus fg of x, which is the same for both, mg sine of theta. And so, uh, yeah, so now we've got it, and we have both for the force of tension. So let me go pink. We'll go pink. So we have f of t this way and f of t this way. So... Uh, what we can do is just set them equal. So minus mu sub k. Right, I'm just taking this formula right here. Mg cos of theta plus mg sine of theta minus ma equals ma plus mu sub k. Mg cos of theta minus mg sine of theta. And so that's cool. And now that we have this, it's really just a matter of getting uh, or simplifying it. So notice every term has an M. These can all cancel. So those will all cancel out. Uh, and then now what we want to do is get uh, or solve for it in terms of A. So let me actually just write this again. Minus mu sub K times the cosine of theta plus G sine of theta minus A equals A plus mu sub k g cosine of theta plus g sine of theta. So to get a by itself, uh, what we can do is just add it. So I'm going to go ahead and add a to this side. So add this a to this side and then minus these. So I'm going to have the a on the left though. So 2a equals, so we have this already. So minus mu sub k, or sorry, it's going to be minus... Yeah, let me actually just write it out. Minus mu sub k times the cosine of theta plus g sine of theta. Right, we're going to minus the mu sub k to the other side. So minus mu sub k. Oh, sorry, I think I forgot the g. Oh, yeah, I forgot the g right here. Sorry about that. This is a g there. Um, so there's a g in this one too. Sorry about that. g cosine of theta. And then we would minus this the other side. So minus g. minus g oh sorry i'm totally messing up uh, let me look at this again so a plus so this is actually a minus here that's my mistake that's a minus therefore this is a plus plus g sine of theta sorry about that um and uh yeah so okay everything's right now um and then now it's just a matter of solving for a so divide by two right so if you do this you'll have a equals uh, right, so minus this, minus that is minus 2 mu sub k g cosine of theta plus 2 g sine of theta. So I just combine like terms. Uh, and then, yeah, so let's go ahead and plug this in. So minus 2, right, or actually we can't combine these. Sorry about that. We are unable to combine these. Let me explain why. Sorry, I'm totally messing up. So notice that these are four different blocks. So these mu sub k's are actually different values. Right, so you should notice that. Even though I wrote mu sub k for both of them, keep in mind one is for block A and one's for block B. So uh, when we do this, we actually have to keep them separate. So you'll have A equals minus. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one we pick, so we'll just pick one since they're the same anyway. So point two, and we have point, what is it, point three, uh, point two and point three, okay. So let's do minus point two, right? So the angles are the same, so 
g is just the acceleration due to gravity which is a constant times the cosine of theta which is 30 what was the value 32 right yeah 32 cosine of 32 plus 9.8 sine of 32 minus mu sub k times 0.3 now the other block times 9.8 cosine of 32 plus 9.8 sine of 32 uh, and then all this divided by 2 sorry so it looks kind of weird but should still be right let me go ahead and plug this in now so we have minus 0.2 times 9.8 times the cosine of 32 plus 9.8 sine of 32 minus why did i write mu sub k sorry mu sub k is 0.3 here this isn't supposed to be written there uh, minus 0.3 times 9.8 times the cosine of 32 plus 9.8 sine of 32 Right, and then divide this by uh, value by two, and you will get your answer: three point one one meters per second squared. That's what we measure acceleration in, and this is the correct answer. I verified it. Uh, so yeah, three point one one meters per second squared. Uh, you can round however you'd like. Uh, sorry about making so many mistakes here, but it is right now. So uh, three point one one meters per second squared. That's your answer to A. So when they ask for the acceleration of the box. 3.11 meters per second squared. Obviously, it's down because they're going sliding down it. Right? Um, that's that. And now let's move on to B. So for B, we're finding the tension in the cord. Uh, and really, this is just a matter of plugging it back into one of the equations. Uh, I'm going to just do this one here. Let me go to a different color. Uh, so F of T equals M. Uh, and the mass... Uh, I'm going to choose is 5, right? The mass, they're the same, so it's 5. Times the acceleration, 3.11, plus mu sub k. So initially, we were do doing this for the first block, right? Block, or which one was I looking at? I'm looking at this formula, which is block B. So make sure you use the one for block B. If or Depending on whichever one you want to plug it into, I'm choosing block B. So I have to use 0.3. So we have MA plus 0.3 times the mass again 5 times 9.8 times the cosine of 32 minus 5 times 9.8 times the sine of 32 so a lot of plugging in here but uh yeah so let me go ahead and plug this in and see what we get and i'll make sure it's correct so 5 times uh the acceleration plus 0.3 times 5 times 9.8 times the cosine of 32 minus 5 times 9.8 times the sine of 32. And yeah, so you'll get f of t is 2.077, which is correct. So it's about 2.08 newtons is going to be the force of tension in this cable. Uh, but yeah, so you can round that however you want, 2.1, or just leave it like that. But yeah, so... Your acceleration is here, right here. And then this is your tension. And yeah, so this is your answer to B. Uh, this was your answer to A. Uh, just a quick recap of how we did it. So I knew, or generally when you do these problems, try and look at the variables. And I noticed we have F of T for both of these. So if I, pull, if I can find the formula for them by summing the forces, what I know I can do is just set them equal and I can solve for uh, whatever I'm looking for. In this case was A. So, uh, yeah, so you just kind of look at tricks like that. And, uh, yeah, so that's what we did. These are your answers. And hopefully you found this video useful.